Welcome. Uh, I'm Bavin Osterhout. I've been here at LCC since 1976. Um, I teach a class on online stress management. I taught it in person starting in 1981 and shifted to online in 2001 and stopped teaching on campus around 2005 because I've had some back problems. And I live 100 miles north of here, so I don't make it to campus very often. Um, so um, this is a, 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 an area of interest that I've had just kind of as a sideline for um, most of my career. I, I worked as a psychologist and licensed master social worker for 40 years. And um, so I did a lot of counseling, and in my stress management class, we do a lot of problem solving. So critical thinking was an important part of that. So I've kept up on that literature and always tried to, to find the, the underlying principles that, that seem to make the most sense in terms of helping people to think clearly, to ask good questions and solve problems. So uh, this is an outgrowth of that. We are being uh, videotaped. Um, I use a lot of videotapes in my class, and I hope to edit parts of this and make it useful to my students. It also, I think, will go on the, the CTE website, uh, so it's available, and it'll go on my website, so it's available. You can watch it later if there's something you miss. Um, and so you can uh, check it out. And that website is on there. It's called Bring Truth to Fear. Um, and that's what kind of brought me um, around in a, in a deeper level to this topic is the, uh, the 2016 election followed by the election in Brexit and, and in England and everything that had been happening in Poland and Hungary and a lot of other places since then really made me stop and question what direction is our world going in, or what's happening, because there, there's an increasing use of fear uh, as a political tactic, and people are, are making decisions based using fear, what I call fear-based thinking, which really limits our ability to take in information and see the larger picture and see how things relate. Um, and we're getting separated into groups that can't communicate with each other. So uh, the project that I'm working on, Bring Truth to Fear, is taking each of those um, uh, topics. Uh, there's a, a, we gave a talk last time on fear-based thinking, um, and that's uh, on my website. The first two parts, we have to do some more editing yet. Um, and uh, there's also uh, introduction to all three parts of that. So if you want more information as well, I, I also have this PowerPoint on the website and feel free to share that or use any parts of it that you like. And, and all of the screens and everything uh, will be available there. So uh, all the information you can get, get a follow up. Some of the print is a little bit small on your handout. Um, and so those screens are available full size on the website. You can download and use those. Or if, if they're not available to download, let me know and I'll put them up to make sure that they are. So I have them all available in PDF and, and um, none of it will be, uh, it'll all be common source. So it'll all be openly available uh, to anyone who can use it. Uh, this is a different, uh, I've been teaching for 41 years and this is a different way of teaching than I've ever done before. I have, it's my first time using a full PowerPoint. Um, and so part of the reason was it's a, it's a new topic that I haven't uh, uh, dealt with before and it made sense to put it in a, in a linear fashion. Uh, part of it was to facilitate the recording process so it can be used at other times and in other places. Um, and also it just kind of interests me to try it out because a classroom is media. Okay, I am presenting information and you'll be sharing information and there's a communication there and these same questions and issues uh, come across. And I was thinking about how I usually teach, especially when I taught my class on campus and had taught the same class you know, for decades. Um, I would come in and give a, an introduction and open it up to questions. And we would get through the whole class uh, just by responding to the questions and fit it into the outline and the model and people would a grasp of, of everything that needed to be covered just through that interaction. And so I told a lot of stories about my experience with uh, students and patients and, and different situations and how to solve problems. And that was more of a, of a, um, a relationship-based change of information. Whereas this is, this is more conceptually based. So bear with me on it, it's my first time, <laughs> okay? It's not how I'm used to doing, I may get off topic, pull me off. Pull me back if I am, if I'm not meeting your needs in terms of this. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to give that a try and to see how we work with that. Um, 
That being said, I, I, I always like to, to bring things to their um, simplest form. Uh, I had a professor when I was an undergraduate um, who challenged me to uh, always fine tune and identify the principles, the essential core principles of what was effective in my work. And I kept in touch with him for 25 years, was Dr. Ralph Lewis at Michigan State. And he continually challenged me, I continued to do that, and that's essentially what I've done in my, in my stress management class and what I did through my counseling and so forth. And so I'm going to start out by giving you what I think are the two components to discern what's true, okay, in, in, the, in the simplest form. Um, and that is restore balance and ask questions. Okay? The reason we need to st restore balance is if we're building up tension, as soon as tension starts to build in our body, we, there's a whole process of adaptation that goes on. Okay? Our body gets ready to deal with a crisis. I call it crisis mode, especially when the tension reaches a certain point. Okay? Our focus becomes more narrow. So think of, of a survival situation, okay? I'm not paying attention to what's going on around, I'm paying attention to the threat. We stop taking in new information. Actually, we're not really forming new, new pathways in our brain in a state of fear. We're actually reinforcing old pathways. So we'll go to old ways of thinking, even if they didn't work, okay? So when we're out of balance, we're not making good decisions and we're not seeing clearly and we're not taking in information. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna give you a couple of techniques uh, that I have used in my class now for uh, actually from the very beginning um, and they've uh, used them with thousands of students and what these techniques are is they go to the uh, essential issues that that we deal with when tension is building okay so there's two parts of physical tension I'm going to give you two techniques one is is the the, the nervous system gets out of balance okay the, it's called the autonomic nervous system there's two parts to that nervous system. One sends energy to muscles. Anytime you're doing work, you have to have that part active. The other does your maintenance work. Okay, it digests your food, cleans out your blood, keeps you healthy, does all of that. It's all your internal organs. They work opposite each other, okay? The breathing that I'm gonna show you is called natural rhythmic breathing. There's videos on my website that I use for my students that go into more detail, but we'll practice it for a few minutes to get you a sense of it. Um, actually stimulates the primary nerve that feeds uh, the parasympathetic nervous system that does the maintenance. So what's happening is these two systems work opposite each other. Okay, you can't be doing physical work and digesting lunch at the same time. If you're running a marathon, you don't eat right beforehand, <laughs> okay? And when you're digesting, you, you can't, I mean, one, is, there's actually a process that suppresses one while the other's on. So what happens when we get stuck in stress and we're hurried and under pressure, this nervous system gets stuck on and it gets fed by stress hormones and all kinds of other things that complicate it. So the solution is to stimulate the other nervous system. And I found, and this is well known, I mean, it, it, that level of detail maybe not, but it's, it's something they've been doing in yoga for thousands of years. And that's where I originally learned the technique. And then what I found working with patients and students, uh, what's happening when it's not working and figured out the essential component. And what it is, is the main nerve that feeds that nervous system wraps around your esophagus and there's a muscle in the bottom of the lung shaped like a parachute, there's an opening in that muscle passes through there. And what I found what was key, just trial and error over decades, is the rhythm of the movement of that muscle appears to stimulate that nerve and if you have the rhythm right, you will activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay? So, and the rhythm is three to four seconds down, three to four seconds up. You just get a slow, continuous rhythm without pause. Okay, and that's called natural rhythmic breathing. So if you put your hand on your belly and just watch your hand, and we won't master it, but I'll give you a, a taste of it. Watch for a moment, but this is what it looks like. The diaphragm moves down, the stomach and intestines move out. Three to four seconds out, three to four seconds in. If you try to do it, it doesn't work very well. See what I did when I said try? I tensed without even thinking, okay? So when we try, we're trying to make something happen and our muscles will be activated. So just allow it to happen. So uh, this is a real common way of breathing if you watch when people are first learning this. That's maybe 30% efficient. If you keep doing that, you'll get there, okay? But ultimately, you get to a point where this one is still 
and that one moves. You can't force it because that tension will, will interfere with it, but when you allow that to happen. Okay? So that's something to practice, and again, for more information, go to the website, but, but just to taking even a minute to, to uh, uh, stop the buildup of tension allows your mind to open up. It makes all the difference in the world. I've dealt with people with violence most of my career uh, and in the first few years on a, on a quite regular basis, and this was a critical component uh, to, to dealing effectively with that. Uh, it, to, when I was calm, then I could help them to calm. Um, the other one is becoming aware of how we're tensing, okay, and the, the physical response to that I call grounding. And, and all it does is, and why don't we stand up and do this together, okay? So I'm standing in a way so that my knees are bent and my pelvis is over my feet. Okay, and the reason for that is, is my pelvis is now supported by my leg muscles, or by my bones, not my muscles, okay? If I lock my knees, now my muscles have to work, okay? But when my knees are bent and my pelvis is over my feet, my bones are holding me up, okay? And when I'm standing relatively straight, my spine comes held up by my pelvis, my head sits on top of my spine, my shoulders hang from my head, I don't have to use tension, okay? Interesting thing about tension, when we tense, we always tense up. No one ever tenses down. It's a consistent pattern that I've seen every place I've been. We become uptight. We don't become down tight. And there's opposing muscles everywhere in our body. So if I straighten my arm, these did the work, these have to let go. Bend my arm, these did the work, these have to let go. This is tension. Bouncing down activates the other muscles. So let's just do some bouncing down. And just let your breathing relax, let your jaw relax, and just let your shoulders, and just bounce down into your knees, okay? It's not bouncing up, okay? That's the other muscles. It's bouncing down, okay? And it's really interesting. This is real simple, and it's a little bit silly looking, um, but it can make a huge difference, because once you stop the buildup of tension and you've got the parasympathetic nervous system going, now your mind is open, okay? So that's the balance piece. Um, go ahead and sit. Uh, I'll just share with you, um, this just came off my website, uh, or my course site, uh, this morning. Uh, my students just finished an assignment where they have to practice uh, this and two other balance techniques, the, the other one I'll give you at the end of the presentation. They have to practice them a number of times a day, every day for 10 days. And it, it takes a while for the, the, uh, the liver to clean the stress hormones out of your blood, body when you've got the correct part of your nervous system stimulated. So usually by the third or fourth day is when I start to hear results. But this is just some comments of what's different after 10 days, okay? After practicing these exercises for 10 days, my head is much clearer and I feel more relaxed. By saying my head is clear, I mean that I'm more focused on my classes and I have a better understanding of what I need to do. Another. Currently in my life, there's a lot of stress and it seems to just keep piling more and more on. I've noticed some major differences since starting these exercises. First of all, they help me to redirect my thoughts from things that aren't relevant to my situation at that time. They help me to physically calm myself, my whole mood has changed, and they started to become a habit. I notice that I'm able to deal with my initial stress better. Instead of sitting there panicking about it, I complete the exercise and I'm able to think more clearly about how I need to fix it. Another. The difference in my life after practicing these techniques has surprised me. Not only do I feel more relaxed mentally, I'm able to focus on the tasks that usually stress me out. Okay. This is a big deal. Okay. It, it, it sounds kind of simple, and it is, um, but it makes all the difference in the world. Everything is easier when you're in balance. Everything is harder to the extent that you're out of balance. And thinking clearly is extremely difficult when we're out of balance because everything in our body and our whole survival instinct is working against us. Essentially, everything not essential for survival shuts down when we're in crisis mode. Even if we're in crisis mode because we're exhausted and haven't been sleeping enough, okay, we're using tension to push ourselves and it has the same effect over time as, as being in a traumatic experience uh, without the emotional component, of course. Okay, so in terms of the physiology of it. And then the second part is asking questions. Uh, if we simply start asking questions and keep asking questions, and one question will lead to another, we will get to what's true. 